Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to thank the organizing committee, and Professor Dr. Mirvet Matar, for their kind invitation. Uh, oh, actually, after uh, the uh, lecture by Professor Dr. Mohammed, uh, you give a lot of science. So uh, my uh, presentation is not about science, it's rather about uh, the protocols, whether the international protocol, uh, the national protocols versus, of course, the international protocols and uh, the uh, upcoming protocols for the national health insurance, uh, uh, because uh, as I was listening to your uh, presentation, I just remembered uh, and uh, about all the studies and all the therapeutic options that are currently present for the myelofibrosis. fibrosis I remembered uh, a long time ago when we had uh no knowledge of the myelofibrosis, nothing about the pathology, nothing about the biology, and very limited treatment option. So um, as much as your presentation had a lot of options, I think in the guidelines in Egypt are a little bit different. So uh, you'll have to uh, discuss it. I would like the uh, discussion at the end so that in uh, a way to try to improve the upcoming therapeutic options and protocols that will be implemented, inshallah, soon in uh, Egypt. Uh, when we come to the w 2016 WHO classification of the myeloid uh, malignancies, uh, they included uh, the, uh, the, the term MPN category uh, that were the JAK2 MPNs, uh, polycythemia vera, uh, essential thrombocythemia, and um, uh, primary myelofibrosis, and they were oper uh, operationally grouped together as the JAK2 MPNs. The, MP, the, uh, the primary myelofibrosis was, sub was subclassified into pre-fibrotic and the overt fibrotic, uh, and other MPNs within the same categories included the CML, the CNL, and the chronic uh, xenophilic uh, leukemia. These are the uh, WHO classification uh, MPNs, chronic myeloid leukemia, which is BCR able positive, chronic neutrophilic leukemia, and the chronic xenophilic leukemia not otherwise uh, specified, uh, the MPN unclassifiable, a polycythemia vera, essential thrombocythemia, and the primary myelofibrosis. Today, I will be discussing what are the treatment options or the current therapeutic options that are present in Egypt and that are reimbursed by the uh, different uh, uh, health authorities, whether the, MO, uh, the MOH or the health insurance, or that will be the seed for the uh, national health insurance at uh, the When we come to the polycythemia, uh, Vera, according to the N um, NCCN guidelines, uh, they, they classified it into low risk and high risk. When it comes with the low risk, the therapeutic options are according whether the patient is asymptomatic, we continue with the aspirin and the phlebotomy, whether symptomatic and is indicated for uh, cytoreductive therapy, or whether the patient has a disease progression to the AML. In this phase, we go with the AML treatment. The symptomatic uh, category is, is when there is new thrombosis or disease-related uh, major bleeding, uh, frequent or uh, failure of uh, uh, phlebotomy, uh, splenomegaly, thrombocytosis, leukocytosis, and disease-related uh, symptoms. In the high risk, the therapy includes uh, monitor for new thrombosis or bleeding, management of the cardiovascular risk factor, aspirin, uh, 81 to 100 milligram per day, phlebotomy, and the preferred regimens is hydroxyurea, peginterferon, uh, that can be given to the patient based on the age and other patient-specific variables. And we monitor, and for adequate response, we continue the treatment for inadequate response or loss of response, we go, or the pay. For loss of response or inadequate response, we go with uh, cytoreductive therapy. If the patient is intolerant or to hydroxyurea, peg interferon, uh, or new thrombosis, or there is splenomegaly, thrombocytosis, or leukocytosis, uh, we, go, uh, we go with clinical trial or the JAK uh, inhibitor oxalitinib. Uh, currently, the fedralitinib, as Dr. Mohammed said, is included in the protocols, or the peg interferon in case of disease uh, progression. We, we start to treat 
uh, or go with the AML protocol. With the Egyptian experience in polycythemia, almost all the therapeutic options are present and practiced in the Egyptian national pro protocols, apart from reimbursing the JAK inhibitor that if are indicated are paid out of the patient's pocket. That is international uh, in the MOH uh, guidelines, in the health insurance guidelines, uh, uh, Hydroxyurea, peganterferon, uh, phlebotomy, uh, supportive treatment are all included. However, the JAK inhibitors are paid out of the pocket if indicated. With the essential thrombocythemia, the treatment algorithm uh, aims to classify the patient into very low risk or low risk essential ET. And Accordingly, if the patient is asymptomatic with no indication for cytoreductive therapy, we go with the aspirin or the observation. Symptomatic with potential indication for cytoreductive therapy or new uh, thrombosis, splenomegaly, thrombocytosis, all the disease-related uh, uh, outcomes or symptoms, we go and initiate the cytoreductive therapy. Off here. <laughs> With the intermediate risk, we assess for uh, whether the patient is asymptomatic or symptomatic or having disease progression, and we go with the initiation of uh, cytoreductive therapy if the patient is asymptomatic, uh, is symptomatic or developing uh, disease-related events or disease-related uh, uh, symptoms. Uh, with the high risk, we monitor for new thrombosis and we manage the cardiovascular uh, events, aspirin, and the preferred regimens are hydroxyurea, peganterferon, or anagralit. In the Egyptian protocols, all the therapeutic options are present and practiced in Egyptian national protocols and are completely reimbursed in different sectors of the different healthcare protocols across the country. Yani, fi qararat, fi mufait, li al anagralid, al hydroxyurea, we al al any other uh, disease-related uh, symptoms, sawa and al medical treatment that the patient might need for cardiovascular events is also reimbursed by the medical authorities in Egypt. When we come to the history of uh, CML, and it was very interesting for me because uh, and I, I insisted on adding the CML as part of the MPN for today because I can only remember that the time when the Philadelphia chromosome was discovered and the time came out with the uh, TKI uh, at the, uh, el at that time and it described it as the a cancer bullet uh, in Egypt and according to the uh, guidelines uh, stratification of the patient according to the Sokol score, uh, Sokol score the, Has uh, the Hasford score or the ATIS is uh, done and accordingly uh, for CML to be uh, diagnosed, it has to be a Philadelphia positive or a BCR able, uh, BCR able uh, positive. Uh, in chronic phase, phase, we go with the risk uh, score, and in advanced uh, CML, we assess whether it's accelerated or blast uh, phase. In that uh, condition or in that uh, time, we uh, uh, ask the patient, or we recommend that the patient goes for uh, HLA uh, testing and uh, allogeneic bone marrow transplantation. With the primary treatment, whether for the low risk or the intermediate high risk, the uh, preferred regimens uh, included all the TKIs, the first uh, generation imatinib uh, or, or the generic, the second generation, uh, the bozotinib, the zanatinib, and the nilotinib. Uh, and accordingly, it's according to the preference of the treating physician and the uh, risk stratification of that patient. Uh, and allogeneic stem cell transplantation is a practice if there is no complete cyto, uh, cytogenetic response, and if it is uh, positive, we discuss the options with the patient for transplantation, uh, plus or minus DLI, and we uh, advise the patient goes with uh, allogeneic bone marrow transplantation, whether currently the current practice includes the allogeneic from a complete matched sibling or a haplo uh, transplantation if the patient is in need for transplant and has no matched related donor.
So in the Egyptian experience, the CML, the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, were introduced in Egypt in 2003. Glivic was introduced in the national protocols and reimbursed in 2007 or 6, but some seven. Uh, second generation TKIs were included and reimbursed in the national protocols in 2011. In 2017, there were nearly 5,500 patients reimbursed for TKI. Currently, there are three different drugs available and reimbursed on all the protocols national protocols, MOH or health insurance, imatinib, the innovative drug, and the biosimilar or the uh, generic, uh, dazatinib and nilotinib, only the innovative drugs, and the bone marrow is reimbursed, whether allogeneic or haplotransplant, and the haplotransplant uh, was, uh, regimen was included in 2018 uh, with the MOH uh, uh, um, uh, protocol upgrade. So currently, CML patients in Egypt uh, are being treated to have a normal life expectancy, a high quality of life, and achieve a stable deep molecular response and TFR to avoid lifelong uh, treatment. Coming to the myelofibrosis, and over the uh, past 10 years, myelofibrosis therapy has uh, evolved and a lot of therapy have been introduced and is continuously being upgraded and a lot of therapies are even in the pipeline. So primary myelin fibrosis is a myeloproliferative neoplasm that originates at the level of the hematopoietic stem cell and is characterized by cytopenias, extramedullary hematopoiesis, megakaryocytic hyperplasia, reactive marrow fibrosis, and systemic symptoms resulting from the elevated levels of inflammatory or pro-angiogenic cytokines. Uh, Dr. Muhammad beautifully illustrated it. Uh, but however, PMF with the uh, Jack uh, uh, MPNs has the worst prognosis out of the ET, the PV, uh, uh, primary myelofibrosis has the worst outcome. And in uh, the, uh, these are the uh, demographics from abroad. Uh, I have a couple, uh, I have a, uh, a preliminary analysis of uh, more than 120 patients uh, uh, with myelofibrosis. I will be giving uh, some of their data that uh, were collected and analyzed. Uh, out, uh, abroad or uh, uh, outside Egypt, the median age uh, of diagnosis is 65 years old. The main cause of death, of course, is infection and bleeding from progressive bone marrow failure, thrombosis, and AML transformation. Uh, and about 20% of the patient develop acute leukemia. This is the WHO uh, criteria, uh, whether uh, to differentiate between the PMF, the pre-PMF, and the over-PMF. The, the Egyptian experience, and that was really amazing for me with this preliminary analysis, but we have a lot of patients below the age of 50, unlike what comes from outside. So I think this calls that we should start uh, putting our own uh, guidelines to uh, in comp to, compri uh, to to put all these patients and, com and uh, within the protocols, keeping in mind that the age of myelofibrosis in Egypt is less than uh, what's uh, internationally uh, known. Uh, 50 to 55 uh, is, is a lesser, but uh, And this, and and uh, but but uh, with the age 60 and above, uh, they are uh, of course the second uh, age group that. Uh, uh, that Uh, they are the second age group um, uh, more common to develop the myelofibrosis, but at, uh, as I said, the uh, above 50 years of age uh, highlights or puts a red flag uh, for us uh, as hematologists in Egypt. Uh, coming to their, of course, the male uh, predominance as uh, internationally uh, described nearly uh, more than uh, uh, more than double of the patients are uh, males versus females and in this demographic uh, uh, chart, uh, pie chart, uh, we see that in Egypt, nearly half of the patients come from the Delta region, uh, and we can understand because it, 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 it has a lot of governance and uh, 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 the, 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 the statistics from the, uh, the statistics uh, or the patient diagnosed with uh, PMF from uh, Delta is high. Next in uh, rank comes Cairo and Giza. Uh, Upper Egypt comes next, Alex and minimal uh, or a small amount of patients come from a uh, Swiss area. 
With the prognostic uh, scoring system in PMF, uh, the IPSS is uh, done at the time of diagnosis, the IPSS during any time of the disease course, the IPSS plus and the MIPS, the MIPS plus are all done during the disease course. Uh, in Egypt, mostly what we use is the IPSS scoring system because it's more convenient uh, with age, uh, uh, looking at uh, or giving way to the age constitutional symptoms, the hemoglobin uh, parameter and the total ecstatic count and the blood blast. Uh, but however, it's only applicable at the time of diagnosis. Uh, the DIPS, the more dynamic, uh, uh, the, uh, dynamic international prognostic scoring system can be done at any time of the disease, but the problem with it is uh, the, uh, it has to, uh, to, uh, to uh, count on the karyotype. And unfortunately, in Egypt, not a lot of people do the karyotyping, so the dips will be very tough to monitor the patient with during therapy. However, uh, because it, it, it demands the follow-up or the initial uh, recognition of uh, other mutation, uh, whether the cal reticulin mutation or the maple mutation, or the triple negativity, as Professor Mohammed was just saying, the MIPS-70 uh, or the uh, Mutation Enhanced International Prognostic Scoring System is used for the transplantation age patient with primary myelofibrosis. fibrosis. And I was glad to know that uh, the they, they, uh, transplanters, they do go with the MIPS-70 as, as much as possible so that they can uh, gather uh, more information and have a forecast about the outcome of the transplantation. With the genetically inspired prognostic scoring system, uh, it carries a lot of karyotyping and a lot of uh, points regarding the uh, mutations or the driver mutations that are present. Uh, and uh, if for the ET and the PV um, uh, or post ET PV myelofibrosis, there is the uh, my sick PM. Uh, unfortunately, but we don't use it, uh, our, or it will be tough in Egypt because the car it requires the uh, the the, the inclusion of cal uh, reticulin mutation not everybody does it because it's usually these mutations unfortunately are not reimbursed and they are out of the pocket from the patients uh, for the patient so in the egyptian experience the ipss as a scoring system is uh, the one that's done or evaluating the patient and for the follow up clinically and lab assessment are uh, there when we come to the treatment of myelofibrosis, uh, we, we, uh, it, the NCCN guidelines uh, uh, yani stratified them according to the MIPS and the DIPS, uh, but w one of the things that we have, we, we look at the therapy or the therapeutic options that are there, uh, it includes the JAK inhibitor, the PEG interferon, the hydroxyurea, and the assessment in the middle to see for the re-evaluation whether to continue treatment or move the patient. For the high risk, if the patient is transplant candidate, allogeneic uh, stem cell uh, is, uh, uh, is prescribed. If it's not a transplant candidate, uh, the patient, uh, a, a platelet below 50,000 is for clinical trial. Above 50,000, we go with the, uh, um, the JAK inhibitors, whether oxalatinib or fedrolatinib. And if the patient is not a, 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 a transplant candidate and uh, with a bad uh, hematological profile, we go with the supportive treatment. Currently, MF treatment and outcome uh, includes the allogeneic stem cell transplant, which is the only curative uh, potential. Uh, myeloablative uh, allo stem cell transplants give a survival rate of 14 to 14% uh, and 62% for patients below uh, 45 or above 45 of age. So age is very important in this patient. And with the Egyptian population and the Egyptian demographics that preliminary were, were, were addressed in, 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 the upcoming, uh, 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 in the upcoming report, uh, uh, patients who are below uh, 50 or 50 of age, I think transplant should be uh, prescribed or should be addressed in every patient with myelofibrosis in Egypt. The median uh, the age of diagnosis is 65, so in Egypt it's completely different. So 
uh, allogeneic stem cell transplant will have a role in therapy for a, in the Egyptian population because of our different demographics. Uh, surgery and radiation therapy for splenomegaly are associated with significant morbidity and mortality and do not affect underlying disease. Uh, and uh, we all have seen splenectomized patients and how it, uh, it, 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 it gets you in the wrong track when, we, when the patient really finally needs to be treated uh, actively for myelofibrosis. Splenic radiation is, uh, will alleviate the symptoms for a short period of almost six months. It is an option. It is in reimbursed by the uh, national protocols uh, as a line of therapy when the patient has splenomegaly or needs uh, to uh, decrease the disease burden and no other option is available. So for the young patient with high-risk disease and a good performance status, they should be encouraged for the allogeneic stem cell transplantation. Patients with low-risk disease should be taken into consideration treat the transplant-related mortality and a very high risk for GVHD. And when we, consi we consider allo with, patient, with disease progression, if it is refractory, transfusion dependent, and the percentage of blast is more than sorry, 20%, and adverse cytogenetics barriers to the success includes, of course, the regimen-related toxicity, the graft failure, the GVHD, and the poor performance status. So when we come to the uh, support treatment for patients with MF uh, that includes Protein stimulating agents, danazole, lenalidomide, and thalidomide, as uh, Dr. Mohammed was just uh, uh, saying. Uh, we, uh, and in case of uh, AML progression, we, and the patient is a transplant candidate, we in, in, in induce remission with a hypomethylating agent, whether as a cytidine or decytabine, uh, and then go with the uh, allogeneic uh, stem cell transplantation. If the patient is not a candidate, uh, we go with the hypomethylating agent and uh, low dose induction chemotherapy. In the Egyptian experience, supportive lines of treatment, whether uh, erythropoietin stimulating agent or danazole, immune mediator, lenalidomide and thalidomide are present hypomethylating agent when the patient is progressive disease is present jack inhibitor roxolitinib is the only one present in egypt bone marrow transplantation whether allo or haplo are endorsed all the above lines of therapy are endorsed uh, talking about the post transplant gvhd and the use of jack inhibitors uh, there is a controversy however some uh, 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 protocols do uh, reimburse the use of roxolitinib in the uh, event of uh, gvhd in these patients as planic uh, irradiation is query, but it is used. I use it sometimes when I'm desperate. Uh, at the end, I would like to thank you. <laughs>